This is the Fire Maple Sunflower. Unusual name for a stove, but then again, it's a bit of an unusual stove. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on it, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Fire Maple for sending out this sunflower butane stove so that I could share it with you. I'm going to take you down to the tabletop. We're going to go over the specifications for the stove and, of course, how it operates. And it does have some unique features not seen, at least I haven't seen, on any other stove. And I'll talk about my experience using it out in the woods to cook a meal. So, yes, the sunflower from Fire Maple. It is a bit of an unusual stove, but before I get into that, I want to share with you what else it came with. So first off, the case. Now this is also a bit unusual for a butane stove, but uh, I think it's appropriate in this situation, and I'll, I'll explain why I say that in a moment. And of course the manual and warranty information for the stove. Okay, now let's bring this back in. I'm going to talk about some of its key features, then I'll go through its specifications, and of course I'll, I'll set it up and demonstrate it. So right off of the top, one of the things that makes this literally different than, well, any stove that I own, any stoves that I've seen, maybe with the exceptional one, which would be the Fire Maple Mars, this has a radiant heat source. It has, uh, but it's different than the Mars in that this is ceramic. You can see it inside there. It's a ceramic block full of pinholes all the way through, and it is that ceramic block where the gas comes up and ignites and diffuses across the block and heats the block itself up as well as this grill, as you'll see when we get to it. So those two things are uh, make it a bit unusual. Something that appears on a few of the stoves from Fire Maple is this pressure-regulated gas uh, attachment here. So different than a regular gas attachment, we've talked about the benefits of pressure regulation in the past. Primarily, it, it work better in cold weather. They work to maintain even pressure as the temperatures drop and as the contents of any canister drops as well. So that's on the stove. I think one of the things that is really quite different about this is this, this extension bar here. I know it looks like a handle, but it's not. It tilts the stove to provide radiant heat. So it's also a space heater in addition to be a stove that you can cook over. I'll talk about my thoughts on that in a few moments time. Uh, one more thing that's different. I it actually didn't even notice this right away until we until I started really exploring it. Can you see right in the center? That's a quarter inch 20 thread. So this can be mounted on any tripod that would also accept the typical camera mount. I, again, I don't think I've seen that on any other stove. The other thing is this stove is actually set up and designed to be taken apart for maintenance. And uh, yeah, so it's quite easy to disassemble. And the last thing is it ha does have a full three year warranty. All right, let's go over the physical specifications for the stove. So total weight for the stove without the case is 27 ounces or 796 grams. So yes, it's a bit heavy. Uh, but what do you get for that weight? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Now, the case, I can give you the weight for that, so you'd have to add it in. And it's probably a good idea to add that weight in if you're considering carrying this. Again, I'll explain why the case is important in a moment. But the case comes in at 3.84 ounces or 109 grams. Now, the length from end to end, 6.4 inches, 163 millimeters. Width in this direction is 4.3 inches and the height, now that would be the height when it's folded down without the legs like as it is right now, would be 3.7 inches or 78 millimeters. Now as far as the performance for this stove, it is rated at 6,141 BTUs, otherwise expressed as 1.8. Uh, eight kilowatts. And uh, so what does that mean? I mean, it's, uh, I don't know how to express that in terms of performance except to do a boil test. But so I did do boil tests with the stove and I'll give you those figures. They're not overly impressive, but again, I'll explain why in a moment. So I started out by testing with isobutane, which is what I'll be using to demonstrate today. And of course it was two cups of water or 500 millimeters sitting at a cool room temperature. I got a boil time of four minutes, 17 seconds with 12 grams of fuel being consumed. So this is not a speed demon and it's not especially thrifty with the gas as you can see. Now I also tried this with propane and I have the adapter sent to me by Fire Maple that you can attach to a 
regular one pound propane tank and it has the Lindal valve on the other end that you can attach your regulator to and with that I got a boil time of 4 minutes 55 seconds also with 12 grams of fuel yes it's a little bit slower but protein doesn't or propane does not pack the heat that uh, ounce for ounce or gram for gram that butane or isobutane uh, pro I just wanted to share that with you as well all right finally just before I set the stove up for a demonstration to give you an idea what the flame pattern looks like on this I mentioned a couple of times now the case and why I think even though it's a bit bulky it's important to use this case for this thing for a couple of reasons let me just fold it back down again so I would start by folding the legs under and then the prop bar I guess is the only way to say it so it folds down like that and then of course you would wrap your cord around and put it in the case but here's one of the things I've noted about it now it's certainly not a deal breaker but it is something to be aware of this pops off real real easy that has some benefits of course you can take it off for cleaning purposes and you can see where there's knurled knobs here and two on the other side but they will also accept a flathead screwdriver those are there so you can further disassemble this because I expect over time the ceramic element or burner up on top will get it, well, it could get clogged. Mine hasn't yet. It's gotten a little dirty, but it hasn't gotten clogged. One thing I would highly recommend against doing, even though it looks like something you might want to do, is to use this like a small cooking grill and put your meat directly on top. Now, having said that, I didn't try it. And the reason I didn't try it is the reason I'm not recommending it. I don't think it's a good idea for all the grease and fat from a hamburger, bacon, sausages, whatever, for be dripping through on top of here. They will flame up. That's not unusual. But I think what will happen is it'll tend to clog this element up. So I think it's probably a better idea not to do that with this. I mean, if you have and you've and it's worked out for you, let me know in the comments later. But it's not something I was keen on doing. So it's because the way this comes apart a little bit easily and then you kind of have to line up the uh, grill to get it back on not a big deal but it does take a second or two to get it lined up properly there we go okay um, I just think that that's why the case is a good idea to have to keep it all compact and unit all put together okay so I'll just back the camera up a little bit I'll attach the propane and we'll turn it on and see how it works all right I've turned all the lights off except for one and I'll turn that off after we get the stove lit uh, so a couple of things here this is quiet exceptionally quiet for a gas stove especially one of this size it's not the usual roar you would get from a stove that's great except that it makes it a little hard to know when the thing is actually running. The other thing is you'll see it actually gets a little challenging to see the flame. One of the best ways to know the stove is actually running is to leave it run for a second and then the top element here, the screen itself, starts to glow red. I know that's not the best way but it's the best way for this stove. So uh, another thing to mention is there is no piezoelectric lighter in, uh, built into it so you are going to need a flame of some sort. So let's get it started. I'll turn the gas on and I really can't even hear it running. Can you hear that? Just a slight little bit of a hiss. Now you can see it's starting to warm up or glow up. Wow look at that. Eh? Look at the radiant heat that that's producing. So quiet, gets so hot, so fast. But you can really, even down low, you can't see the flame because it's so diffused across the whole ceramic element that it's just the heat. Well, the heat is everywhere. That's the best way to say it. So it does produce radiant heat as a space heater, but I'll talk about my thoughts on that in a moment. All right, that's all I wanted to do for demonstration purposes. I'm going to back the camera up and then I'm going to give you a few more thoughts on the sunflower before wrapping this video up. All right, my bacon is coming along nicely, starting to get a little browned around the edges there. Loving this fry pan. This stove is doing a good job of that. Now, a whisk, all important. Let's keep things moving. So I'm just going to keep things moving until it's all nicely melted, and that's when I'll bring you back. All right, let me give you my thoughts and my experiences using the fire maple sunflower while I'm out in the woods for cooking. So to be honest, I use this quite a bit around the house 
but I only took it to the woods just a couple of times. I took it out specifically on one occasion to cook a meal. And I'll explain why I did that. And that's in a separate video. In fact, I'll link that video at the end of this one if you're interested in watching. But I chose to cook that meal because I wanted the capabilities of what this stove and does best, which is distributed heat and you can turn it down to a very low volume. That means you're less likely to burn anything in a pot or a pan. In fact, I was frying and I was simmering a stew-like uh, uh, meal and I did not want, and it would, would, not, would have been actually counterproductive if I had had an intense central hotspot in the bottom of the pan, which would have promote burning. So that's what this stove really does best. It provides radiant heat distributed over a greater area than virtually any gas stove that I have seen on the market today, which means that you're less likely to burn things because the heat is over the whole bottom of the pot or the pan. That's what I like most about it. The other thing is I like how quiet it is. I like how quiet it is, but at the same time, that's a bit of an issue or a bit of a con because it is so quiet that especially when I'm outdoors, you, uh, you really want to you know, know that your stove is running because you can't see it. So it's a bit of a challenge to, to uh, know exactly when it is lit up. I would recommend also a windscreen, although this is very wind resistant, which is another characteristic of the uh, a ceramic element in this and the heat distribution. It's not as affected by flames as it is other times. I'd still recommend using a windscreen around it. I think it just gives you that much more protection. Of course, I'd recommend that for virtually any stove uh, as well. So those are the things I like about it. Okay, are there any downsides on it? Well, the weight right up front, it would be the weight. So this is not a stove that I would backpack with, even for a meal during the day, unless it was something special, like I mentioned the meal that I did cook with it. I think I would relegate this to car camping, or um, if I had any kind of a, a, a conveyance, some way of traveling, maybe in the winter time. And this may be where this stove works best, is in the winter time for a couple of reasons. The re pressure regulated um, valve on this thing. Uh, that's both a pro and a con. So the pressure reg regulated valve, as we've discussed before, is great for cold weather. It's great for providing a consistent pressure to the stove, even as the tank empties out. And that's often when you start to see the pressure drop in the stove. So it works great. However, one thing about pressure regulated stove, regulated stove I've noticed is that they're hard to get a fine adjustment on the flame. So if you're trying to really bring that flame down to a low, low, simmer then it's it's not much of a movement between low and off so it can be a bit of a challenge working with that and the problem is is you can't see it and you may not hear it go out so I, I found that a bit challenging working with this because you can get it down so low that the flame you know the the glow that you saw on the the grate starts to go down which is of course what you want yeah, bit of a challenge. I'm not going to say that it's a deal breaker. It's just something to be aware of. I'm not convinced you even need a pr uh, pressure regulated valve on this stove. Uh, it does provide cold weather performance, but I don't think it provides the fine adjustment I'd like to have in a stove I'm going to be using for cooking. Then again, if you're taking this out and you're using it as a heat source to warm you up under a tarp, then maybe you do want that pressure regulated valve so you can take it down to some lower te lower temperatures. So here's my thought on using it as an infrared uh, ceramic space heater. Where? Where are you going to use it? Under a tarp? Yes, I think that would make some sense to do that, but inside of the house, inside of a tent? I'm not so sure that's a great idea because you need the ventilation to ensure you don't get any toxic fumes being released. Now, I know the risk is low with this. In fact, I'm using it inside of the house right now, but I'm also not letting it run for a long period of time in an enclosed space. I have windows open for ventilation. So I just don't think that this is the type of thing I would use as a space heater. Uh, yeah, enough said about that. Now, the only other thing that, uh, it's, again, it's not a deal breaker. It's just something to be aware of, and that is the fuel consumption. 
It's not a high power stove in terms of BTUs compared to a lot of other stoves that I've tested, but it is a good amount of power, but it does consume a fair amount of fuel. Now, likely if I had used a very large pot, I think in that case I had used a 13 centimeter pot in that testing, but in a, if I had used a much larger pot, then of course I may have gotten better fuel economy out of it because the heat would have been more completely distributed across the diameter of the bottom of the pot that I was using. This was with its big burner, there's a lot of gas being thrown out in a lot of area, so it's less concentrated into one small area, which again is its benefit, it's one of its key features, but it does mean that there's a lot of that heat can easily be wasted around the, the outside of a small pot, and that's where the, the gas or the, the fuel consumption goes up, at least that's my belief in this system. So, um, yeah. There are some pros, there are some cons. I've given you as much as I know about this and my experience using it for you to help you make a decision if this is for you. I like cooking over it, I absolutely do, but it's not something I would take out for boiling water. That's the best way to shorten it up. But if you do have any comments or questions, I'd invite you to put them in the comments section below. All the information I've given you and the links to where you can take another look at this will be in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that pathless travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.